It's Labor Day, and I'm a historian, so I want you to pay close attention to the way that journalists and commentators explain why only 10% of American workers belong to unions, as opposed to way back in 1955, when 35% of Americans belong to unions. Notice the verbs they use. They say that union membership has declined since 1955 or that union membership has fallen or collapsed or shrunken. These kinds of words make the drop-off in union membership seem natural, you know, like a snowball melting in the sun. But alas, that's not true. The real story here is, and please note my choice of verbs, is that unions have been systematically crushed, weakened, annihilated, and destroyed by anti-labor policies passed by Congress and state governments at the behest of corporate interests. Almost every law passed regarding labor unions since the 1950s have been to weaken labor unions, to make it harder for them to recruit, harder for them to carry out actions, harder for them to push back against employers. For example, 28 states in the U.S. have so-called right to work laws, which make it very difficult to form unions or even to keep existing unions going. Corporate America since the 1970s has also spent billions and billions of dollars on strategists, consultants, psychologists, and lawyers to convince workers that unions are against their interests, that actually harm their well-being. Corporations also pay these groups to come up with ways to get rid of unions or to prevent them from starting in the first place. Just Google the phrase anti-union services and you'll get an idea of how huge this industry is. Corporations have also eliminated millions and millions of union jobs by moving factories to right-to-work states or outside of the U.S. to countries that have cheap labor and basically no labor laws. And in recent years, companies like Starbucks, Chipotle, and Trader Joe's have been accused of closing stores where union activity is gaining some traction. And don't forget the Supreme Court, which in recent decades has sharply curtailed the rights of labor unions to organize, to collective bargaining, to recruiting workers, and so forth. And all the while, corporations and their political allies have waged an incredibly successful PR campaign that has told the American public and the American worker that unions are harmful to business and therefore harmful to the American worker. I could go on, but you get the point. One of my Ten Commandments of History is that nothing just happens. Things happen because people with power make them happen. Segregation didn't just happen. Mass incarceration didn't just happen. Contaminated water didn't just happen in places like Flint, Michigan. And the decimation of American unions didn't just happen. People with power made these things happen. Now, that may sound like a depressing message, but here's the key takeaway. If some people use their power over the last 70 years to wage war against unions... It is also possible that some people, some other people, American workers and their allies, could use their power to push back and bring about a new era of justice and dignity and success for American labor unions and the American worker. And there are some signs that this may be happening. Recent polls over the last couple of years show that about 70 percent of Americans have a favorable opinion of unions. And that's as high as it's been since 1965. Also, efforts to form unions and the number of complaints that workers have filed against corporations are surging. So stay tuned, people, and happy Labor Day.